Hi, today we are going to talk about the einstein de Haas experiment. This experiment is used to show that the quantum angular momentum is of the same nature as that of the classical angular momentum. So here we have the setup. What we have here is a bump magnet or any magnet that is enclosed within a solenoid connected to a DC circuit. When the DC circuit is turned on, there will be a rotation of the magnet and the angle of rotation will be recorded using this mirror which reflects light of a light source onto a detector. So over here what we have is a magnet of a certain magnetization. This circuit will produce an external magnetic field that is of the opposite magnetization. So when we switch on the circuit, the external field produced will realign the electrons in the bar magnet in the opposite direction to its initial magnetization. And this change in the magnetization of the bar magnet can be described by the following equation. The change in magnetization will be equal to 2 times the n times the magnetic moment of each electron. The n refers to the total number of free electrons that can rotate in this magnet. So what we have over here is a realigning of the electrons. However, when we conduct this experiment, what we will, what we will observe is a net rotation of this magnet which can be described by the following the change in angular momentum of the magnet itself is the moment inertia multiplied by omega which is the angular velocity what this shows is that when there is a change in the angular momentum of the electrons because it undergoes a rotation when the magnetization is changed it also leads to a net rotation of the magnet which we can observe. Hence this suggests that this angular momentum um, at a quantum level which involves the electrons is of the same nature as that which involves the magnet itself which is the classical angular momentum. Now William will continue with the rest of the presentation. Hmm. Now I'm going to talk about the results from our measurements. First, the measurement of delta m yield the following results: two times the number of free electrons times the bulk magneton, which is defined as the charge of electrons by Fitz Blau divided by two times mass of the electrons. Now, the measurement of delta l is just two times n by Fitz Blau over two. If delta J, which is the total angular momentum from the electrons, all the electrons inside the inside the magnet, is just two times the number of the electrons, the free electrons, times the spin of the individual electron S. Now, from conservation of angular momentum, we know that delta j the magnitude of delta j is just the magnitude of delta l and therefore s is just h bar of 2 now if we define the general magnetic ratio gamma s to be delta m divided by delta j we have the following results mu s divided by s and from our results we know that mu s is equal to mu b from this result and s is h bar over 2 therefore if we define the g factor gs using the following formula mu b divided by h bar 
we get the value of gs equals to 2 because this value mu b over h bar over 2 is just e over m so using this semi classical model a simple one we can obtain a value of 2 which is very close to the prediction from quantum electrodynamics so thank you for watching the video i hope you learned something from the einstein dehas experiment